Hello and welcome to another Wolf Time Gaming video. Today I'm going to be painting up the Cat Duelist uh, from Oathsworn for Boroughs and Badgers. Absolutely fantastic looking sculpt. I love the way he's cleaning his sword there. Um, there's a few ideas I've got, but before we get to that, let's get the kettle on. Okay, so the first thing I did was obviously glue the actual miniature to his base. I then used a, a fine sand um, just to, to actually use as basic material. So I had a little bit of interest. You don't need to use these. In the past, I've used um, like ready mix battlefield basing type stuff, but this I wanted just to sand to match the rest of the Boroughs and Badgers warband I've been working on. The next the next thing I did was uh, give it a good base coat of Wraithbone, uh, which is a GW base coat for use with uh, contrast paints. Okay, so painting the miniature himself, the first thing I did was uh, use a little bit of skeleton bone just around his cheeks. I wanted him to match the uh, possum boots you see in, uh, in like the Shrek film, so I wanted it to be quite a light colour. Um, I did consider using like a shabty bone or something like that, but I had this uh, skeleton horde from a, a previous uh, project I've had going on, so I thought I'd use that just to, to use the paint really. Then he's painting the actual orange parts of the, uh, the the fur, so I wanted him to be like a ginger cat, the same as Puss in Boots, so he very much reminds me of him, so that's the direction I wanted to go in. To start with, I used Jacaro Orange, uh, and I just did a, basically a complete base coat um, on the whole model. It's quite a decent paint, um, another GW one that goes on really, really well. Uh, you might want to do two uh, coats if you use it, um, two thin coats, as, as they recommend. I didn't need to in this instance, it was straight on, and yeah, that was absolutely fine. So the next thing the colour I used was Troll Slayer Orange. It's a really, really bright orange, but we're gonna. I was gonna pull this uh, back down uh, in a minute. Um, pull the colouring back down when I had the shading. So it, it does go go a little bit uh, a little bit darker than this. I was a little bit worried when I got to this stage and he was using this. Thought I'd gone a bit too bright, but it, it worked out okay in the end. So to add the shading, I actually use Agrax Earthshade. Um, it's just a, a shade paint that GW do that went on really well. I did all around the, the mouth as, at, and nose at this point as well, just so it dropped into the recesses there, and then all, all around the tail and thing. did pull a little bit more than I'd like it, liked it to, um, but it, it looked okay. It, it, it worked quite well, uh, and I added that shading that I was trying to trying to get really. So it's then on to the clothes of the actual miniature now. Um, Pussing boots out the Shrek film didn't wear clothes, so I decided to go with a uh, Zorro sort of a feel, which is what I think um, the Pussing boots is essentially based on. Antonio Banderas. Now he wears complete black, and I didn't want that. I thought it would be too much, so I actually gave him a red jacket. He's got like a shirt on, a jacket, and then a cloak, um, as well as his trousers. So I thought I'd go with the red, um, purely because you had the red highlights all on the, the Puss in Boots as well. And he looked quite quite nice, really. Uh, at this point, I also did the, the feathers, um, just on the, the back of his hat as well, uh, just so it, so they uh, they stood out a little bit more from the rest of the miniature, and just around the, the band on his hat. Uh, as well, just a, a, exactly the same as what you see in, in the Shrek films, basically. <clears throat> At this point, as well, I actually highlighted a little bit of, of the of the orange as well. I, I thought it, it, I pulled a little bit too much in a few areas with the uh, Agrax Earth shade, so I used Troll Slayer, Troll Slayer orange just to bring that colour up a little bit, just on the edges as well, just so it it highlighted it slightly. The next stage was the actual um, black uh, around the. Pretty much the, the all the rest of the clothing. So I started with the cloak, and I used Corvus black for this. It's a, a very um, very thin black. It's a grey blue sort of a colour, uh, or a very blue black grey blue sort of a tinge to the black, rather than a, a deep matte black. Um, it will require it did require two coats on this one. So I did the initial coat ar around the boots, trousers, and his his cloak um, and his hat as well, which I moved on to in a second. And it all, all looked pretty good, it started to really take shape at this point. Still wasn't sure what to do with the shirt, um, and you'll see later on I basically left it as white. 
um, which I thought actually stood out from the miniature quite nicely as well. As you'll see from uh, as this is going on, you can see where it is a little bit streaky, this paint as it goes on there, so you definitely need to put two coats if you use the Corvus Black. I always do with Corvus Black as well. Um, it's not there's a few army painted blacks that are a little bit better but i quite like this i like this great gray sort of blue tinge that it's got um because it's not a complete like dark color it, it looks quite effective uh this is essentially they're putting on the second coat now just to to finish it off and then i moved on to the next color which in this instance is mephiston red um and essentially i just wanted to highlight around the the edges of the boots um one thing i did notice on a few of the shots from Pussing is that he has got a red sort of tinge around the bottom of his, his boots so I, I went with the top and bottom um, just to add a little bit of definition to it really because I thought that the, the boots blended into the trousers a little bit too much um, but I thought it looked really effective anyway I thought it looked really, really nice um, I, at this point as well I also um, went around the model with a administration grey, administratum grey sorry uh, just to pick out some of the raised areas on, on his cloak just all, all around the brim of his hat and the top of his, the, the hat as well and just a little bit on the boots just to just to highlight those uh, few raised areas so it wasn't just a, a complete block of colour it just adds that little bit more detail to it really and he's holding out like a tissue or something in his hand where he's cleaning his weapon uh, where he's cleaning his sabre or sword um, to do that, I wanted it to stand out a little bit more, so I used Zeri's purple for this. Uh, it's a very different colour compared to the rest of the model, so I thought it would stand out quite nicely. And it adds a little bit more interest to it, really, uh, rather than just being essentially a ginger cat wearing black and red. Um, it adds that extra little bit of colour to to the model itself, um, and look quite nice. Uh, it looked quite a little bit different. Uh, I also painted the um, a brown pouch he's got on his left hand side with Mournfang brown as well, just to make it. Uh, stand out a little bit more be a little bit more different at this point I, I used a lead belcher a silver paint that I, I use for pretty much all the silver I ever paint uh, I always use lead belchers and they're quite a decent one uh, on the actual sword on the blade itself um, I, I left the the hilt and the, the handle of the the blade because I wanted that gold but at this point I painted it silver essentially and this is like a ball at the end as well there's also two areas of the shirt as well as two little buttons that are painted silver and then uh, there's a, a like a rope a piece of string holding the shirt together which i went with screamer pink uh, just so it was a different color did think about going with red with this as well but uh, i decided i wanted it to stand out a little bit more but well, not too much so which is why i went with the screamer pink Uh, the next colour I used was uh, Zandri Dust, and this was just to touch the, his claws on his left hand. Um, he's just got three claws that are visible, so I just wanted to, to highlight them really. I didn't want them to be the same as the rest of him really, I didn't want him to remain ginger. Um, at this point as well, if you wanted to, you could touch up the areas where, which we use the skeleton hoard around his nose and his eyes, if you wanted to do that, um, but you don't, you don't need to, you can, you can leave them as they are. Uh, the uh, hilt was next on the on the actual weapon itself on the sword which I use retributor armor it's really bright um, gold sort of a color and it, it, it just stand out from the, the actual mini it looked really really nice actually this gold sort of a color uh, which we darkened down in a, in a little minute as well um, after we did the first coat on the base which I used was Rhinox hide essentially uh, just to do the the first coat which is darker brown just to give a decent base uh, base color to the the actual base itself while we were waiting for that to dry, I went with the Null Oil, um, coating all the black areas, so the black and the grey and the red around his boots all blended together nicely. Um, I also did the hat as well um, made to, to make sure that was, that was all blended re really, really nicely. The weapon, so it made it look a little bit more used, it darkened it down and uh, around the uh, gold as well. Um, at this point as well, I did some rings using the uh, Null Oil around his tail, just so it, it sort of matched uh, pussing boots a little bit as well. Moving back to the base, uh, I did Mournfang Brown as uh, a quick dry brush of Mournfang Brown just around the base, just to highlight some of the raised areas. Not that you really see them underneath the, the static grass and things, but it does add that little bit of detail in case you lose some of the grass. Uh, around the base itself, is uh, went back to using uh, Corvus Black just around the base, just to frame the model really. Um, I've seen uh, a lot of people use the same sort of colour as the base, like the browns and things, but I wanted it to stand out and add a bit of framing to it. Uh, then coated it in PVA, the actual um, soil area, and then used a static grass. Uh, but I just put it on with some tweezers, so it looked a little bit messy. wasn't very wasn't neat as as it would be if you used an applicator. 
um, and added a little, uh, a couple of little purple flowers as well, which were a little bit of a pain in this one. You can see I'm struggling to get them to actually stay down. Uh, so I used a little bit of PVA just to hold them in place as well after us, uh, just to finish it off really. I gave him a little while to dry and there we have it, he's finished and he looks absolutely amazing, uh, much better than I thought he'd turn out. I was a little bit worried going in with this uh, gingery orange colour, especially with it being so bright and I know it's a lot brighter than uh, Puss in Boots which is what I was aiming for, however I think it looks really really nice and really effective. I hope you enjoyed the video, I know I enjoyed painting him, um, make sure you subscribe to see any future ones, I've got a few more videos coming out for the Boroughs and Badgers range, uh, but I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video today, uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.